No formula for finding a franchise quarterback. And never more apparent than what we've seen this year. I don't know what the Giants have in Daniel Jones. You know, sometimes you find a bargain. Sometimes you waste a high draft pick. Giants used a high draft pick on Daniel Jones. I don't know if they wasted a high draft pick on Daniel Jones. And then you find a bargain like Tom Brady and the Patriots did back in the day. But one thing's for sure, it's an elusive task to find your franchise quarterback. Not that many teams get it right. The Bucs did get it right, and they're a contender, a Super Bowl contender. The Giants are in a different situation right now. They do play hard. They have to play hard because they're not a very good team. Daniel Jones has all the tools. He can run, throw, athleticism. Problem is, can't avoid turnovers. You can't play the position if you can't avoid turnovers. Just ask Jameis Winston. Last night, two costly interceptions in the two-point loss. And it has to be frustrating for Giants fans because you watch Daniel Jones forcing things that he doesn't have to. Tom Brady and the Buccaneers didn't play great last night, but Brady took care of the football. And sometimes that's the most important thing. And Jones is only in his second season. But the NFL is moving on quicker and quicker at this position. The fact that the Dolphins want to find out now if Tua Tonga Vailoa is their quarterback for the future should tell you everything. Because they have the Texans draft pick this year. And if the Texans would somehow end up with the worst record in football, the second worst record in football, third or fourth, maybe there's a package deal. Maybe you go after Trevor Lawrence. This is how teams are thinking. You think you got your franchise quarterback and you realize you don't. Chicago Bears thought they had their franchise quarterback, went up to get Mitchell Trubisky. The Bears, they've done this before. This was one of those glaring mistakes, and it's going to haunt them for a while. The Browns with Baker Mayfield, they don't know what we, they have with Baker Mayfield right now. But if you're trying to correct these mistakes and deliver on promise that the team saw in Daniel Jones when they drafted him in 2019, it better happen sooner because later they're probably going to take a quarterback. If they're up there again, they probably will. McLevin, you got a poll question. This uh, program brought to you by the great folks at the Breeders' Cup on NBC Sports this Friday and Saturday. The world's best thoroughbreds compete in 14 exhilarating races at the Breeders' Cup World Championships. Learn more at breederscup.com slash 2020. Catch all the action live on NBC Sports. Okay, question of the day. If you're the Giants and let's say you have a top three pick, are you moving on from Daniel Jones? Sort of being discussed all throughout the media world. Right now, they would have the second pick overall, which means they'd have to decide on Daniel Jones or Justin Fields or trade it down. Yeah, Paul. Is the person who drafted Daniel Jones still employed by the New York Giants? I don't think he's along for the ride. Isn't that everything? Dave Gettleman. Because if he goes another quarterback, then he's admitting a mistake. If there's a new GM before the draft, I would assume he goes in his own direction. I would think Gettleman, if he's still there, is staying with Daniel Jones. That would be my gut feeling. I don't know if you trade the pick. I don't know what's going to happen at the top of the draft. I don't know who's going to go all in and you know what it will take to get up to number two or number one. But... If Dave Gettleman is still the GM, I don't think that he wants to give up on his his quarterback. Yes, McLevin. Do you think the Giants really stay around the one, two win thing, though? They, they're so close. I mean, they should have four wins now. Well, being in the NFC East, it feels like they're going to accidentally pick up a couple of wins. Man, they might end up with four wins this year. You know, Jacksonville, Houston, obviously the Jets, you know, Dallas. Washington, I mean, all of these, there, there's teams, but I don't think anybody's as worse, as worse off as the Jets are right now. The Giants play hard. Said that yesterday. They play hard. They, they could have taken this to overtime. And, you know, there's controversy at the end of the game. And Joe Judge, the Giants head coach, he, he makes sure that he compliments the official in a way because he was critical. He was in an official's face after the no call. So they call pass interference on the two point conversion with Deion Lewis and uh, Antoine Winfield Jr. And uh, here's Joe Judge after the game on the official making the right call. Nate made the right call when he threw the flag. So I'm not sure why it got picked up. Uh, we had a pretty good view. I know they can't use a Jumbotron for replay. We had a pretty clear view of that as well. Um, you know, but I thought Nate made the right call the first time. I thought, you know, normally your first instinct is the right one. So Nate is Nate Jones. He was the field judge. And then they huddle up. 
And there's no replay to look at. Like, they're just huddling up. That's where I think that uh, the home office is in their ear to say, uh, you know what, we're looking at this from uh, about four different angles here, and uh, I think we could pick up that flag. Let's go home. I, I, it was one of those, is it enough to overturn the call? That's what I, I, I thought it was bang, bang. And I, I understood, I wouldn't have called pass interference. I thought it was really, really close. Um, if Winfield doesn't get his arm on the ball, then Deion Lewis probably catches it. He didn't have his, uh, he wasn't even facing the quarterback. It was kind of blindly putting his, you know, arm out there. And he, he made contact with his body. To me, that's sort of, part of jostling for position. I, I, and I'm not trying to, you know, hey, they threw a flag to bail out Daniel Jones. It was a bad throw. Like, he lacks anticipation. And, and he should have thrown that probably two seconds earlier. And, it, and it's not an issue there. And they go into overtime. I, I wouldn't have called it. I, thought it. was I thought it was okay. But I think the NFL has to have, you know, complete transparency. The NFL, if you, you know, whenever there's doubt, just throw a flag. And then you let the home office help you here. And I think that's what's happening now. But I'm okay with getting the call right. I just, you know, these officials on the field, it feels like they're just going, uh, just throw the flag. And then they wait. They huddle up, and then they wait for somebody to speak into their headset to say, you know what, you can pick that up. That's not pass interference. Or, hey, there was enough there. You know, let's let it stand. Yeah, McLovin. Two questions. If Tom Brady had thrown that pass, would that flag have been picked up? And if there were fans in the crowd, 80,000 people screaming in that stadium, would they have picked it up? I think there are both legitimate questions to ask. Brady probably gets the call. If the fans are there, the Giants probably get the call. You know, you got this antiseptic, this sterile environment there, and it's Daniel Jones, and it, it was a poorly thrown pass. And I think because of that, they, they gave Antoine Winfield a little more room there. That it, it was thrown, you know, back shoulder behind him. And I think that, you know, had he thrown it correctly, then there was no issue. He sort of made it a closer call by the fact that it was a bad pass. Yeah, Paul. Did the Monday Night Football sound guy pump in fake sound of Giants fans mm. booing when the call was overturned? I didn't mm. hear that. Yeah. It was light. It was muted. Yeah, I didn't hear that either. Did anybody think it was pass interference? McLevin, you, you would have let it stand. Okay. I don't disagree with anything you said. It was super bang, bang. But I thought that uh, his body got in the way. Like, that's what they call pass interference. It was a terrible throw, and the receiver was coming back, and he ran into the defender, basically. But that's kind of what pass interference is. But it was so bang, bang. I, either I, th- call I think right. the hands, that's always the great indicator for me. Where are your hands, and what are they doing? And, and I thought that if he made contact with his chest and he didn't have his hand, he didn't hook him, and he had his arm out, I mean, he got lucky because he deflected it. But if you want to play the conspiracy theory, if you're the NFL, don't you want overtime? Tom Brady in overtime against the Giants? So these people say, oh, you know what? They, they didn't want to give the call. You know, they didn't want to give the call to, uh, or they wanted Brady to win. And I'm thinking, if I'm the NFL... I, I, how many more commercial breaks do I get? Four or five in overtime? Yeah, McLovin. You were into the 11th. I think you might have been past the window on the East Coast, which was watching the Giants and the Bucks. <laughs> but uh, the other, everyone was tweeting, oh, they want Tom in the Super Bowl. That was a popular Twitter conspiracy theory. Well. And they, we, I do. That'd be great. Anybody else think it was uh, pass interference? No. And, and I, you know, Jones made a bad pass. I think he, uh, because of that, it made it a little easier for the official to go, you know, Lewis is coming sort of back into him as well. And, you know, he was, he was at least one second, one and a half, two seconds late in releasing that ball. He, he lacks that anticipation. And you see that where he's, I'm waiting for you to be open. In the NFL, you throw it and then they get open. It's not, you're open, I'm throwing. Because if you do it that way, he won't be open by the time you throw it. 